A family home explodes. Becky is trapped inside. He got me out. He saved my life. We're very close right now. I don't think you could tear us apart. They survived, but lost just about everything. And you lost a lot out there. You got something still in here, and you don't have much to give but you're giving it. Yeah, uh, we, we've got what's in this garage and what was in a storage area. That's what we had left after this fire. So, you know, and this is one of the things we still had. So I, I said, let's do it. If you want it, you got it. Giving of themselves and getting back much more than they ever expected from a community that knows what it's like to be a good neighbor and friend. It is the heart of America at work. They take us to the heart of their story. This garage has seen a lot of racing. Yeah, a lot of racing. Kelly and Becky Meyer live for experiences at the track. Just a few of the successes are on display in their garage. Somewhere north of 100, I'm not sure. We won uh, 10 track championships over the years. So one in carts, uh, one in a hobby stock, and the rest has been in modified. What got you into racing? Actually, um, my dad used to race, but when I was 11 years old, my cousin called me up and said, I bought a go-kart, you want to go to the races? And I said, sure. So again, he showed up in the 7th and Powell with a cart hanging on the back of it, and we went to the races and been hooked ever since. I've been there. Not just the competition, but the friendships made. More than, it, more than you can imagine. Good friends. Friends that will do anything for you. Soon, he was luring his friends into this new world, He's known Chuck since high school. Chuck and I used to go snowmobiling together, and uh, he always had red cars in the street. So when I built my El Camino, um, took it out there, and I and I went back to him. I said, Chuck, you got to do this. I said, This is. I said, You go out there, you can run into people. I said, They don't get mad at you. I said, It's awesome. Chuck got out about 15 years ago, but Kelly kept on going. It was at a racetrack that he won the heart of a woman who would change his life. She said she seen me run across the track at Dubuque, so that's her story. I'll just go with that. So must have been a pretty good run. Must yeah. have looked good. Yeah, I must have. Yep. Yeah. Actually had Dad's old coop up there that day. Together, they teamed up to enjoy the sport they love and raise a family of racers with oil and rubber running through their veins. They ran wide open until an accident off the track stopped them in their tracks. We had a home explosion and fire. And Surviving the shock of the explosion as fire engulfed their home, Kelly knew he had to get to his wife, Becky, who was in another part of the house. He would have to get through the flames to get to her. He says he did what he had to do. My husband coming to with my bedroom window to get me out of the house. He's my hero. He got me out, he saved my life. Crawled out the window in my, in my nightgown, that's all. That's all I had. So. so he was severely burned. Yes. But yet he was there for he you. He got to me. That kind of told you about your relationship in a nutshell. Yeah, we're very close right now. I don't think you could tear us apart. <laughs> burned over 40% of his body, his arms, back, and back of his head. More than 40 days in the hospital, months of follow up, surgery after surgery rehab, inpatient and out. He had his family, and although his house was gone, there was something left. The garage stood alone, not attached to the house. It survived, his prized race car safely inside. How did that change you? Oh, I just, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it makes me appreciate my family and my friends much more. You, you realize what is truly important to you. And what is it? You know, it's so it just it, it makes you want to give back. I can tell you that. That chance to give back came sooner than expected. A phone call. Remember Chuck, his friend since high school? He was terminally ill. When you found out that he was sick, 
and that's one of the reasons obviously he wants wants to ride again. It was tough. Um, he's always been kind of my hero uh, and when you when you find somebody like that in that situation with that diagnos diagnosis that it's hard to take at first. Chuck wanted to drive again. So this car was sitting basically. Uh, the motor was out of it, training was out of it. Uh, and um, I always told them if they wanted to go racing, let me know. I put it together. So Friday night at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I get a call from Rhonda and a text from her and said, can you find a car for Chuck for tomorrow night? And I'm like, well, I'm not tomorrow night, but maybe next weekend. And she says, well, all of his kids and grandkids are up here. They want to see me racing. And I said, I said, well, I said, you guys, you got any help? She said, I got four guys. I said, to come over tonight. Becky was all in too. No hesitation. I started crying. He said he was leaving to uh, help Chuck get a race car ready to go. And I said, you're not leaving me. I'm going with you. So I sat out here with his wife till three in the morning. But they had lots of work to do in just a few hours to get it done. As a team of volunteers went to work. A long night of work, but the crew was revved up and raring to go. And at 10 after 11, we rolled this out of the trailer with no motor and no training and no radiator and the wrong gear. And we worked on to about three in the morning and had the motor on the next day. We finished it up and took them to the track. Ready to run. But come race time, instead of going all out at the start, something was happening. Becky had a surprise of her own up her sleeve. I kind of went behind the scenes and asked the promoter to give Chuck a parade lap. Nobody knew it but me. And uh, to watch him out there, I started crying when I seen him stop everybody. And Kelly didn't know what was going on either. He thought something broke. And um, they put him in the lead. And, and he did that parade lap and it was it was amazing. Um, I started crying, so cheered him on. A highlight of your life, perhaps? Yes, definitely one of them, absolutely. A lap for him, a salute, a tribute to a dear friend and fellow racer, a show of respect and friendship that over the next few weeks would just keep growing. Back on track together, race after race, as both men deal with new challenges. I have uh, terminal cancer. Um, they uh, actually, I had chemo yesterday. I have it every Thursday, uh, trying to slow it down. Um, the doctors are saying I probably won't make it through the through into next year. Uh, you know, they give me about six months, and uh, and I'm here to prove them wrong. Enjoying each lap, each race, each day. The perfect ending is they find a miracle drug and he, he doesn't, he gets better. That's the perfect ending. But if, they, if you can't get that, what's next? I told him he can drive it all he wants. So we'll, we'll, you'll see us run at the racetrack here from on out the rest of the year. Kelly says he plans to be recovered enough to be back in the driver's seat himself someday soon. You looking forward to seeing him race again? And yes. We're going to have to get him an air-cooled suit and helmet, so that's going to be quite expensive. So hopefully at one point we'll be able to do that and get him back out there next year. So. But you are just as determined to see him race again. Oh, yes. I love it as much as he does. Our whole family has. A family that lost so much but gained so much more than they ever expected in a small garage that holds more heart than anyone driving by will ever know. A shout out to all those who support these racing events and to our sponsors in this who have helped this family in other ways too. Please check out the links to their companies in the show notes or on our Facebook and website pages at PTBA Media. And if you like what you see, please subscribe, give us a review, share with a friend, help us share more inspiring stories of everyday people doing cool stuff. The Heart of the Story with Gary Matibia YouTube channel and podcast.